Happy Friday Eve day to everybody. I'm so excited you guys are here today for my guest expert, April Hunter. Give me one second. I'm going to double check and make sure we are live in my group as I want to be. One second. Come on now, Facebook. There we go. Okay, cool. I see us live. That is awesome. All right. You guys know how I like to do this. I like to hit multiple places at one time using StreamYard. So here on my laptop, I've got my Facebook business page, my Facebook group, and my YouTube channel. YouTubers, subscribe, smash the subscribe button, say that five times fast, so that you never miss one of my live weekly trainings every Thursday at 1130. And if you're coming to us through Facebook and you haven't already done this on the device that you're using right now, go to StreamYard.com, all one word, StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook and give permission for Facebook and StreamYard to talk to each other so that April and I can see your name when it appears on my StreamYard dashboard. Otherwise, it just says Facebook user, and that's no fun. We want to know who you are and what question you have. When you guys have questions and comments for us, go ahead and throw those in. We will see those at the end, and we will get them answered. And if you're coming to us on replay and you have a question or a comment, and specifically something for April, put it in the comments. If you're on YouTube, put it in the comments. I'll see it. I'll grab her. I'll get the answer for you. If you're on Facebook, in my group especially, all you have to do is tag her when you put the comment in there because she's part of my awesome free Facebook group. Today, you guys, money. Your money, my money, it is on our minds and it should be. The last few weeks together, I've been talking to you guys about your money, how to make more money in your business right now. That was a training I did a couple of weeks ago. How to make this year's income bigger than last year's income. I think that was a training I did last week. All my days are starting to run together. It's January or no, it's February now. Thank goodness we made it out of January. I think I'm on the right track. I found my brain. And today, my guest expert, April Hunter, is here to put some icing on that money cake for us and help us get over some of the blocks and preconceived notions and feelings and emotions that we have about it. This is going to be really fun. You're going to be glad you're here. But first, just in case this is the first time we've ever met, I want to introduce myself before I introduce April. I am Tracy Beavers. I am an award-winning business and sales coach with over 20 years of experience in marketing, sales, and business growth. And several years ago, I became completely fed up with my corporate career, and I hatched a plan to fully exit. And once I did, and I had faith in myself, my my online business, this business coaching um, program, uh, business coaching business that I have, it boomed. And in my set back in my second full year of being a business coach, I busted through the six figure ceiling and I haven't looked back. If you're building your business alongside your full time job, wanting to fully exit, or if you're already a solopreneur and you're just wanting to get to that 5K month, that six figure year, you can do this. You can build a six figure business just like I have. I have coached hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you to get visible and grow your email list so you can get that consistent monthly income that you want and that you desire, right? Money just takes the pressure off so many things. And it's okay to say that you want to make money in your business. All right. As I mentioned before, pop your questions and comments into the chat for us as we go along. We're going to answer all of those at the end. And again, if you're watching on replay, put your question in there. Tag me, tag, tag April. I'll get you an answer. Let me introduce you to my friend, April Hunter. Y'all get ready to learn a lot. April has over 16 years experience in accounting and finance, and she completely breaks the mold. And this is what I love about her. She breaks the mold with her unique and fun approach to the topic. She is a profit first professional. She is certified in profit first. If you don't know what that is, there's an awesome book called Profit First, and it's an accounting system that you need to check out for your business. It helps you know um, what your um, it helps you pay yourself primarily helps you save money, helps you pay yourself, helps you squirrel away money for taxes, all the important things that we need to do. April's approach to accounting and finance and money is perfect for all of us who typically shy away from all the numbers, all the financial things like I don't know about you, but when somebody starts talking about numbers years ago, I would just hear want, 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 want. And I didn't want to deal with it. <laughs> April takes the pressure off. Her, she has a blend of compassion and expertise and playfulness that makes her the go to professional and somebody that so many people trust. She's not just an accountant, you guys. She is a financial guide who is going to lead you through the maze of finance with 
fun and laughter and smiles so that you feel confident and informed every step of the way. And the numbers in the accounting aren't a total drag for you anymore. Okay, April, let's get to it. I just introduced you, but I want you to tell us more. I want you to tell us your story. And specifically, we want to hear about how your entrepreneurial journey has been. Because I love it when we're honest and we talk about the wins and also the stuff that might not have gone that great. I have a lot of that. <laughs> um, so I'm April Hunter. Um, let's see, where, like, if we look way back, um, like kindergarten, okay? Uh -huh. We're gonna go way back, kind of like somebody else did yesterday. We're not gonna go year by year. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was homeschooled for a lot of my early, early elementary education. And mm -hmm. um, my dad was supposed to be teaching me math. And he yeah. was always working, as parents have to do. Right. Um, and in that, I really, really didn't understand a lot of those basic concepts that you're supposed to understand. And so yeah. I have always really struggled in, like, traditional math classes, especially when they brought out things like this. Yeah. Yes. And like, yes. this brings me trauma. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You want to tell everybody what it is in case they're not watching. These are, and so these are like those number counting blocks. Okay. So it's oh, like, yeah. the, you know, you, you put them together and it's like 10 and you use them to like add, and then you can do like, you know, like three stacks of them is 30 plus six. It, it, yeah. Okay. We're going to add it. Trauma. Um, Got it. So I had a really, really hard time with math, but I started working at a very young age. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up in a guest ranch owning family. So I grew uh -huh. up in Wyoming, in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and child labor was a thing, okay? <laughs> I was cleaning guest it houses. Still is. It still is a thing. <laughs> it is a thing. Um, yeah. You know, I was cleaning guest houses. We were like taking people on horseback rides, like all of the things. So I have been working from a very young age. Right. And, um, I was always trying, like, even in my play at his, as a young child, you know, mm -hmm. I was playing as, like, I was the restaurant owner and we were going to have a restaurant. You know, like, everything was very play-based. Yeah. Um, so when I got to college, I was a single mom at that time. Mm -hmm. um, like, freshman year of college, I had a baby. Not mm -hmm. smart. I don't advise it. But, you know, life happens. Um, it happens. It happens. It happens and you you can get past it is yes. what I is the story is the story that I have explored to learn to tell all of you. Um, so what I was doing to support myself and my child at that time is I was cleaning houses while going to college so that I could, you know, live. Um, and then, you know, the realization that taxes were coming around hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was like, I'm going to have to pay so much money to go have these done. And I. I did for a year. I went in and I, I paid for them to be done for a year. And I came out of that tax office feeling so stupid and so defeated because yeah. I did what we all do. I took in a couple reports that I had of what my sales were. I took in, you know, my bank registers. I took in my shoebox of receipts. Mm -hmm. And I didn't ever want to feel like that again. Right. And so the next year, I was like, I'm not going to have that happen. I'm going to figure this out myself. Yeah. Because I want to know exactly what goes into those numbers. And mm -hmm. I want to know exactly how I can save myself money. Mm -hmm. Because my child and I depend upon this refund. Right. Nice. So, so that's how I broke into taxes. Yeah. And what it happened is it became a game. Mm -hmm. It's really a puzzle. It's not math. And what I discovered in it is that there is this little blurb of numbers and we're going to call them purple and they go in this spot. And there is this little blurb of numbers and we're going to call them blue and they go in this spot. And it really became this like investigative puzzle mm -hmm. where it's, and it was so much fun. And yeah. since then in all of the tax returns that I do, because I mm -hmm. do tax returns for clients is I find all of those great little investigative pieces nice. and I have a lot of fun in it in like nice. putting the puzzle pieces together. So nice. that is where the perspective really started to change for me that yeah. math was not as hard as I had made it. 
and uh-huh. it was not as hard as I had been taught. I am not a dummy, despite right. that one time I felt really bad about everything, and that I could really break free of that narrative in my life. Mm-hmm. Nice. And, and so when did you decide to get into the online space? So online happened um, probably about 2014, 2015. By then I had had a multitude of side hustles. Uh-huh. I am one of those people who I just want to, I'm a serial hobbyist. I don't have a hobby. I have every hobby. <laughs> I want to try everything at least once. <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, some of those things made money and some of those things were just fun. Yeah, um, nice. so, but I had gotten married, we had decided to have more kids and there was the looming daycare costs. I'd been yeah. through it once. I knew exactly how much that was going to cost. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if I don't find a way to turn these hobbies into money, mm-hmm. I'm going to have no idea how to do this. Right. So I started out doing, um, like mystery shopping and then, um, then I started selling thrifted clothes, uh-huh. like going in, you find like the designer brands and you resell them. Yeah. And those things didn't really fill my soul. And then what I discovered in that is that I didn't want to do my own accounting because I was working a full-time job as an accountant. And I don't know if any of you have ever like worked a job and then had to like go home and do that same thing. Yep. It's no fun. Nobody wants to do that. It's kind of like. Yeah being a parent all the time, you know, with no break. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you need a break from things every once in a while. And right, so right. Um, what I discovered in that is I hired some people to do my own books for me and they were doing them wrong because oh. they weren't including the fees. Amazon charges currently their online sellers about 40% okay. of the total cost of the item. So if you Uh buy something from a third party seller on Amazon, they Uh are charging that person essentially half of what you're paying just to sell it. Wow. So that's a huge write off that they were missing. Yeah. eBay's about eBay is a little different. It's about 10%. um, Mm -hmm. And Walmart, Walmart is kind of in between them. So Mm -hmm. um, I, I still sell on Amazon because it still pays for daycare, but Uh I have switched to a wholesale model and, um, I, I do my own bookkeeping, but that's really where I decided that yeah. I was going to start this firm uh-huh. because there weren't a whole lot of Amazon accountants out there. Like we have to think about this, like online right. shopping has not really been around that long. I know we all like really became very addicted to it even before COVID and then COVID hit. And now it's like, right. It's so easy to yeah. just, like, even if I'm not buying it on Amazon, it's in my shopping cart. Because it's like, that's where my shopping list is. You know, it's like, I will go and research things, but that's where my shopping list lives is in Amazon. Um, And in that, I just, you know, there were a lot of people who were telling me like, April, you're really good at explaining these concepts and you're really good Mm -hmm. at, you know, like there's not people who understand that we are missing fees Mm -hmm. and our numbers are way off. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And so... Even for people who are, you know, if you have any kind of like online checkout cart, you're probably uh-huh. making fees. Like, oh, for sure. Like Stripe, there's Stripe fees, there's right. PayPal fees for my mm-hmm. services, you know, because I use yeah. Stripe and and, and sometimes um, I, I send, uh, sometimes I receive things through PayPal if it's affiliate money and all that. And yeah. I count all those fees every single month, but they're easy to forget about. They are, especially if you're only looking at your 1099. Yeah, for sure. Well, so, tell us... Um, Tell us a little bit about how the online journey has been. Has it been like, give us a, give us an, an example of something you learned that you wish you would have known. Um, um, online, online is fun. Like I have way more fun online than I do like in normal life. Yeah. I love the privacy that online gives me, even though there's like literally no privacy, but I feel like I could still put on my pajamas and walk around Walmart if I really needed to. Yeah. Um, my firm is 100 percent digital. We nice. don't have we don't have local clients. We nice. have clients. All of our clients are like 200 miles or more away from us. Nice. So it's like nobody's going to walk into my Walmart and see me in pajamas. Right, right, right. <laughs> you and you know? don't, you're not going to be at the ball field with them or at church with them. Yeah, or anything. yeah. yeah. 
And it's yeah. just nice. And I, so I love the little bit of like local anonymity that online brings mm -hmm. me. Um, mm -hmm. What I've really learned over 2023 is I love the contrast between online and like, not just like real life, but nature, like going out just by myself with my dog and me mm -hmm. and just the complete polar opposite that it is. Online brings me a lot of joy. I love connecting with everybody online, like really, yeah, really too. love connecting with everybody online. Me everybody too. is so unique and so different. And they like the stories and the, you know, like everything that they've overcome to like have their businesses grow is just so amazing. Yeah. But then there's like the opposite, which is like just me and my dog out in the woods mm -hmm. and it's just peace and quiet. So um, right. I love both those things. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, you teach, I know that you teach, there are four main things that we can do as business owners when it comes to our money to help protect it. Um, so tell us what are those four things? So the four things that you really need to have is I profit first is one of them. But okay. the other things that we tend to forget about. So a lot of us start these businesses just how I started my first businesses. Mm -hmm. Like I have to make money so I can pay a bill. Right. We are not exactly. starting this business thinking that there's like all of these regulatory things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere like deep down at the base of our brainstem. But we're like, you know what? It's not big enough. We don't need to do those things yet. And right. in some cases you don't. Right. But um, – in the accounting world, I work for billion dollar companies. Mm -hmm. And I got to see the difference that a small thing like not filing your annual report with the Secretary of State, mm -hmm. the amount of money that that adds up to in five years or 10 years is enough to shut down a small business. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So it's like, it's those small steps of make sure that you're registered with your Secretary of State. Yep. And that you're paying your annual report. That is not something that normal accountants do for you. Right, right. You know, it's it's something that you're in charge of doing on your own. Right. Making sure that you have some form of business insurance. Okay. Um, a lot of us don't even think that we need business insurance. And you might not need a big policy. Like right. even having a million dollar policy mm -hmm. is relatively cheap. It's like less than $1,000 for most times. But mm -hmm. if, if anything goes wrong in your business and you get sued, mm -hmm. if you don't have that insurance policy, that's mm -hmm. your house. That's everything that can completely destroy your life. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not set up like an LLC or something like that, for sure. Yeah. Even so if you're not, set, the, even the if you're not set up like an LLC. And that's the last one. <laughs> okay. So the first one is profit first. Mm -hmm. Get that book and follow that method of accounting for us to mm -hmm. know how to save our money in our business. Yep. And then the second thing was be sure to have our um, our filing with the Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the third thing was business insurance. Business insurance. And the, and fourth, the fourth thing was is entity structure. Okay. Let's talk about so, that. Entity structure is kind of one of those things where you start to feel like, this is really confusing and I don't even want to think about this. Yeah. So um, I do have on my YouTube channel uh, a, a, a entity. It's called the Entity Web. And that's really what it is. Is because there is a taxable status for your legal entity and then there is a legal status for your okay. entity. Okay. okay. So, yeah. But they can change. Okay. So I'm going to bring out, I'm going to bring out my props here. Okay. So you have your taxable status and you have your legal status. Okay. Your legal status is what's going to protect you if you get sued. Okay. okay. So mm -hmm. this can be a sole proprietorship. This can be an LLC. This could be an S corp. This could be a corporation. Okay. Your taxable status is how you're being taxed. You okay. can do both of these things kind of mishmash together. So you can be an S corporation, which is getting uh -huh. the lower taxes, and uh -huh. your legal status is still an LLC. That's what I am. So what this does is this makes it so that if anybody sues you, they can't get your house. Right. Correct. It can only take the assets in your business. Correct. But you're paying lower taxes than somebody who's just at an LLC over here because mm -hmm. you chose to be an S corp. So you can kind of be both things. And you the way that you can kind of go up, the, it's almost like a ladder, okay? So you can go from like 
sole proprietorship to LLC to S corp to corporation or mm -hmm. some combination of those. And all it really does is it makes sure that where you are in your business matches where you should be taxed at and okay. how, how much protection you need for either yourself or as you grow your ownership structure. Okay. Got and it. That's the difference. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes it easy to understand. So for, for a lot of my audience, they are solopreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, they, if they have a VA or an assistant, they're paying them on a 1099. They're not, they don't have mm -hmm. an actual employees as we call it here at the States. We right. use W2. They're not W2 employees. So for somebody like that, and this may, you may not be able to answer this question fully, but is, first of all, they need to be an LLC. Is that correct? So you don't have to be an LLC. Okay. There are advantages to being an LLC. Okay. The first of which is that you are able to have the legal protection of if you get sued. Nobody's right. taking your assets. It's right. kind of like uh, the analogy I like to use is like a salad bowl, like the metal salad bowl. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody has one. Some people call them a puke bowl. Please don't mix your puke in your salad bowls. And then you have a strainer. Okay. So the strainer uh -huh. sits inside the salad bowl. Right. If you have just a sole proprietorship, you have a strainer. People can okay. go in and out of that. If you have a salad bowl, nobody's getting through that salad bowl. Got and it. There are ways that, like, lawyers are relentless, and they probably could eventually get through that salad bowl, like if it yeah. was a big enough claim. But right. enough of the small things aren't going to get through that, especially if you're right. running your business really clean. One right. of the ways to do that is to not mix your business and personal transactions in the same bank account. You Correct. can have a personal bank account, but only buy business things with it. And it's Correct. that's like the number one thing that we run into in accounting is they're like, hey, we need an accountant. And then we're like, um, I'm pretty sure you're not selling on Amazon. So I'm not sure why we have all of these, you know, like Walmart receipts in here. And they're like, uh, are those office expenses? And I'm like, oh, no, I went and got milk. I'm like, you can't go get milk as a business right. that doesn't work um so what happens when you do that is you actually are going to pay 13 percent on whatever you buy personally mm -hmm. with the account that you're using for your business it's as oh. if you're getting a w-2 payment attached to it interesting it interesting. also makes it so if you are an llc they take you to court they say you're not running this like a business even if you're an llc therefore we can go after your personal assets Interesting. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, guys, don't mix your personal and your business money and transactions. That's important. Yep. It's, um, it's, it's really important. It's kind of like one of the things there's a lot of accountants who will charge you extra if you do it like consistently. Oh, wow. So, wow. yeah, there's, it's, we have ways to, you know, modify behavior. Some of us like reward based systems and others of us don't. <laughs> if you right. have dogs, you know about the reward system versus the non reward system. Exactly. Um, so what would be yeah. another um, tip that you could give to somebody that's just starting out? Like that was a really good one. And, and some of the mistakes that you see your clients making. Um, so other mistakes that I tend to see are just not paying attention to your money and your cash flow, like right. just completely ignoring it. I completely right. understand that, you know, like I had, I was in that place. I was like, here's your box of receipts. Like I have no idea what's going on with my money. Um, yeah. Especially as you get bigger and bigger, like so usually if you're under like a hundred thousand dollars, $250,000, you can kind of swim your way through things and like the blender of, of business finance. Mm -hmm. But we don't really want to be making decisions on a blender of finance. We no. really want to be making decisions on like a meal prep kit of finance. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what you're going to eat and what you're going to need at a certain time. And it's all prepped and pretty in the fridge for you. It makes it a lot easier because you're not having to go, oh, no, that kid wasn't supposed to have nuts. And I'm pretty sure there's a nut somewhere in this blender. If you have it prepped in your fridge as a meal kit, you're like, oh, this kid is allergic to this. I can't have this. Clean right. this out. Change the thing. It makes it so much faster and easier. Right, right. And so, I, what I um, did in the beginning was, you know, numbers. I've always said numbers are not my thing, even though I can do them. I just, just not. It was not a whole lot of fun for me. And I, in the beginning, I kind of stuck my head in the sand with it too, because I was just really focused on bringing in money so I could leave corporate. 
But what I figured out was when I got an actual profit and loss software system that I enjoyed using that was fun to use, I love looking at my numbers because I, I plug at the end of every month, I plug in all of the income and all the sources of the income. I plug in all mm -hmm. the expenses and all the sources of the expenses. And I can mm -hmm. very, very clearly see what are my biggest sellers you know, and I can start tracking and doing some historical data and analytics of, OK, this is a hot seller in the first quarter of every year or this is my hottest seller in Q3 of every year. And then yep. the expenses, what's nice about that is by listing them all out every single month, I am reminded of where my money's going. So those mm -hmm. sneaky little memberships and subscriptions and things like that that I'm not using and I'm not making full use of. I can mm -hmm. go ahead and see, oh, I need to cancel that. Or yep. the ones that I'm using all the time, I need to consider paying annually for rather than paying monthly. So right. I, that's why I love to track my numbers now, even though it was scary to see how how little, how much or how little money you are making or how much or how little your expenses are. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's definitely, uh, we use that a lot in Profit, profit First. I call it whack-a-mole. Mm -hmm. because you really start looking at your expenses and you're like, which one of these I'm going to whack this month, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it becomes a game of like, what don't I need and what do I need? And it makes it so much fun. Um, right. Let's talk about profit first for just a second. Cause I think <laughs> some, there are some people in my audience that um, don't know anything about profit first. Right. So um, the general understanding that I have is that you set up anywhere between four and five business accounts. Mm -hmm. And that your all of your money that people are paying you comes into the income account, mm -hmm. and then you disperse it to think an account called um, operating expenses, an account called taxes, an account called owner's compensation, and, or, and you may have one that's for profit. And so, tell us how that helps me um, save money, and, and how does that help me in my accounting of my business? So the Profit First is based on a book written by Mike Michalowicz. He has mm -hmm. like eight absolutely fantastic and very easy to read mm -hmm. books on business. Um, yeah. He had a $700 million business that he mm -hmm. ran into the ground. Yep. Um, the point where they repossessed his cars and like foreclosed upon his house. Like he had to go home and tell his nine-year-old daughter that they had to start packing because they were going to come like kick him out of the house. And it was right. really, really traumatic for him. So he came up with this system to make sure that his business was always profitable. So mm -hmm. what it is, is it helps us to understand that we have profit in our business before we reach six figures. You can start profit first in your business at any time. So if you're only selling like $20,000 a year, you can be profitable at $20,000 a year. You don't have to wait until you're six or seven figures to be profitable. And I think mm -hmm. that a lot of us get in that hustle culture where it's like, oh, I've got to get profitable. But you don't you don't have to do that. Like right. that's a lot. That's a lie. <laughs> right. You can right. you can be profitable now. So the accounts that you set up and the way that profit first works is that the normal accounting takes sales minus mm -hmm. expenses equals profit. Mm -hmm. And what profit first does is it literally puts profit first. So mm -hmm. you're doing sales minus profit. Mm -hmm. And I like to break my profit account into two accounts. And okay. The reason is is because Every quarter, I'm paying myself half of that profit account. Mm -hmm. It's my quarterly bonus. So it's like I get to go take my kids to Mario World or I get to go have like a spa day or every quarter I am rewarding myself out of that okay. profit account. Mm -hmm. So that's like my reward bucket. And I okay. like to see it grow. It is very motivating to see oh, yeah. that bucket grow. Yep. And now – start i'm literally three months ahead of time i'm like how big can i get this bucket like are we going to mario world this quarter or am i just going on like a spa day this quarter like right. it's a very different bucket but it's motivating right. yeah. um and then your remaining buckets are owner's compensation which uh -huh. is your salary so that you mm -hmm. can pay yourself regularly because none of us are really paying ourselves if we're not using profit first yeah um, a lot of us but it's also anything that your business is paying for that is supporting your lifestyle. So mm -hmm. when you're a smaller business, that's your cell phone, your internet, your, you know, like some of those smaller bills. When you get bigger, it's like your car, your private jet, those kinds of things. Okay. Right. We're going right. big. When I started my business, I did not dream big enough. And I am in the year where I'm like, you know what? 
we're going big. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I love um, it. Then you have other accounts underneath that. You can mm -hmm. have an operating expense account, but if you have something that you really want to track to make uh -huh. sure that you're on target, then we help you figure out like what are the percentages of what these operating expense accounts are. Okay, nice. So that you can plan and save. You can also do like um, like savings buckets. You can do like rainy day funds. And sometimes if you want your profit up here to go down to a rainy day fund, then you do that. Like if you have a lot of stress and anxiety over mm -hmm. upcoming expenses, then you do that. The other account that we have is the taxes account. Yes, taxes that's my favorite coming, one. Yeah, taxes are coming up in uh, like a month and a half, two months, something like yep. that. Um, and you probably have a stack of 1099s that just came in the mail. I think I have... I think I have like 12 or 15 <laughs> envelopes that I got yeah. last week. I have and some. I well, apparently the tax season opened. Like the IRS officially opened their doors last weekend. It is officially tax season. Right. You are in profit first. We try to have you target 15% mm -hmm. of your sales to save in your tax account. Yep. Generally, that is more than enough than what your business is going to pay for taxes. What yeah. happens is that you don't ever have that feeling of stress and anxiety and in mm -hmm. some situations that I have seen, there has been situations where there is a woman trying to leave her current situation. Mm -hmm. She started this business so that she can start raising funds to right. get out of this situation that she's in. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she has to file a tax return. Mm -hmm. And that tax return, because you're an LLC, mm -hmm. goes on your personal taxes. Mm -hmm. And now you owe money for mm -hmm. your business. Right. And it just brings you back into that cycle of mm -hmm. you don't know how to do this. Why do you have a business? All right. of this stuff. And all you have to do is set up a business, like set up a tax account, mm -hmm. make it at a different bank so you can't see it. Right. put 15% of your sales in that thing. And not right. only will you completely cover your taxes, but mm -hmm. whatever is left over here that you don't pay on April 15th gets to go way up to that bonus account. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And and nice. so not only are you paying yourself, you're paying yourself bonuses, you're saving for taxes, and your expenses are like mapped out so that you know what's coming. Yeah, I love that. Okay, real quick, before we wrap up, well, I want to do the four things again. Profit first. Mm -hmm. and the second thing was? The second thing was? Business entity. Business insurance and business, business entity. Business entity. And then what was the think. fourth thing? <laughs> I don't know if sure either. It started with a B, I'm sure. Our Facebook members are gonna have to. We're, they're gonna have to pull yeah, in here. Pull yeah. in, pull in, guys. All right. I didn't no worries. Okay. We, we covered all, but I wanted anyway, everybody. To hear it. What's that? That's where we need a poll. Right. <laughs> Love it. This is where my oh. Zoom poll saves me. <laughs> right. Okay. So I always love to do a fun fact. Mm hmm. So share with everybody a fun fact about you, and it's about one of my favorite subjects, dogs. Oh, I was like, oh, man, I'm feeling very, very stressed out. I have a lot of strange, weird facts about me that you could ask. Um, dogs. So um, I I am dog obsessed. I love dogs. Okay. I have said that I wanted to have a dog ranch when I grew up. Someday, me. maybe I will have a dog ranch. Yep. Um I've, I've always had dogs. I started with a Bernese Mountain Dog when I was eight. Um, currently, like we got them last year, them being, because there's two of them. One of them is a rescue dog from Texas. Mm -hmm. She is a bull terrier mix. Mm -hmm. She is wild. I don't know if you've ever seen bull terriers, but they are like the cartoon two-year-old of dogs. They like, <laughs> they, they like buck backwards and they do these ridiculous zoomies. She is constantly in trouble and always making us laugh. That's and so then, funny. yeah, then we have a cardigan Welsh corgi. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that have tails. They're a little bigger and their ears are huge. Yeah. Um, her name is Dot, which is the, that's the name that she came with from the breeder. We mm -hmm. did not realize at that time that that stood for destroyer of things. <laughs> Last night, she ate my youngest son's Crocs. Oh, my like, gosh. Foam everywhere. And he loves these Crocs. So I had oh, to do, like, 
a midnight Amazon <laughs> save me delivery. Right. Get them here tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so funny. Yes. The dog shenanigans. Let me check the comments really fast to see if anybody has any questions. Um, I was sort of looking as we went along. I don't see any specific questions for you, but if you guys are watching, come to us on replay and you have a question, you just toss it in and we will get April to answer it for you. Um, mm -hmm. You brought two really cool offers to tell about, tell us about, and I am a proud affiliate for you. I know my assistant Jill is going to pop my affiliate links into the comments for everybody. Tell us about the tax preparedness play shop and tell us about your um, pay yourself a bonus group coaching. Mm -hmm. So the tax preparedness play shop is something that I've ran for. This is my third year running it now. And mm -hmm. basically what it is, is, a lot of us, and it literally stems from that time I took that shoebox in, is mm -hmm. how do you organize all of your documents? Say you didn't right. have bookkeeping. Say that you are like, you're feeling really stressed out because you know that you probably should have had bookkeeping, but it's expensive and we're not going to talk about the trauma. Basically, what the play shop does is I'm going to take you not talking about math and not using any jargon, but we like literally, uh, these are props that I use in it. This We're going to explain inventory and accrual and cash accounting with these. Okay. And what we do is we play our way all the way to everything you need to take into your tax professional to do mm -hmm. your taxes. And I not only do that, but we go through a lot of hidden things and areas that you're not going to think about. Yeah. When, you're, when you're looking for all of these things, like mm -hmm. there are areas that I go into that you would have never looked for an expense. Nice. So not only is it going to get you to a place where you're either emailing your accountant or you're, you know, like walking in with a couple pieces of paper, but you walked in organized and you're probably going to have a pretty good idea about what your refund is or what you're going nice. to owe nice. based upon your numbers. So. Nice. Um, that is open now and it's open year round. It also has a fall component. So we okay. kind of take a little bit of a breather after April because nobody wants to talk about taxes anymore. However, right. you don't save money on taxes if you're not thinking about taxes all year long. Right. So we take a little bit of a breather and then we go back in and we start talking about tax planning, ways okay. that you can literally reduce your taxes. So mm -hmm. taxes kind of work in a way of like, they see how much your checkout is. Like when you're mm -hmm. at the grocery store, you have your checkout number. Okay. And then you're like, well, I've got like $5 cash. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, so now you owe this much money. Mm -hmm. And credits work like coupons. And some of them are like, you can double them or whatever. So mm -hmm. we go through and we look at all of the different credits and all of the different ways that you can save in deductions mm -hmm. and coupons so that when you have to actually pay the IRS, it's less than your checkout number originally was. Nice. So it's a nice. full year program. It's really awesome. You also can sign up for text message reminders of any and all tax related dates throughout the year. Nice. We send them ahead of time so that you have time to get prepared and get it done so that you're mm -hmm. not receiving a text message the day of and going, oh man, I have to make an estimated tax payment today. No, we give you like two weeks notice so that you can take that 15% that you've been saving, go make your estimated tax payment, and then your business gets a refund, which means you get a bonus. That's nice. And the pay yourself a bonus group coaching program. Real quick, what's that? So pay yourself a bonus group coaching program is a intensive walk through profit first. My okay. analogies are way better than Mike McAllowitz's analogies because <laughs> Um, I actually talk about things that we talk about every day as women. Like mm -hmm. we talk about laundry. We talk about cleaning your kids' rooms. We talk about cleaning the fridge. It's all things that you are intimately mm -hmm. aware of and can do in your sleep. And we teach you essentially how to think about your accounting in your business and how to set that all up. It's more than just profit first though, because yeah. everybody has a money story. Some people have more of a traumatic money story than others. Right. And what we really kind of walk through is how do we get to the point where we're not avoiding money? Right, right. Like, so it's more than just that. We talk through a lot of those really tough questions. Um, yeah. And it's a 16-week program. And it's a lot, it's a, it's an amazing transformation. Because nice. at the end of 16 weeks, you pay yourself your first bonus. Nice. I love that. All right. This is awesome. You guys, if you are loving this content, I want you to save it into your favorites. 
and create your own library of awesome trainings. As you know, I go live every single week, Thursday at 1130. Sometimes it's just me. Sometimes I bring in an awesome guest expert like April to help us out on a topic we all want to learn more about. And I want you guys to pop into my free Facebook group. If you're not already a member, it's called Be a Confident Entrepreneur, Get Visible, Grow Your Income. You can promote yourself anytime. You can get help on anything you need as a business owner in the group. Make some, collab make some networking uh, connections for collaborations, things that are going to grow your business. Be here live with me every Thursday at 1130. Put it on your calendar, set the phone alarm, and remember, don't go it alone. I say this every single week. You guys, being an entrepreneur is freaking hard. Some days, everybody wants to buy what you're selling. Other days, nobody can remember your name. And if you think you're alone, you are not. I want you to have a great balance of the week and weekend. And remember, when one of us rises, one of us rises, we all rise. So we have got to keep cheering each other on. And April, I want to tell you thank you again for being here. This was amazing. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun to come and bring my toys. <laughs> good, good. All right, my friends. I will see you guys next week.